let me switch on over and start recording. All right, so like I mentioned, what we are going to do uh, right now is see this wonderfully uh, rather honest game from these two professional players. Uh, not the most aggressive game in the world. It will feature some fighting, but it features a lot of building up too, which I think you're going to find kind of interesting. I found it kind of interesting. Uh, let's see. Uh, like almost any game that I actually go over, it, it does not feature anything abnormal. We have a very, very normal opening from both players. 4-4 four, four boring. Yeah, some people can think that. Some people can think that. Any bets on the tree? Uh, nope, because I'd lose it. This, however, is a little bit different. We see an approach rather than the open corner. So, normal, but a little bit less commonly seen, perhaps. Uh, this way, black can't go into orthodox, black can't go into mini or micro, Kind of just sort of taking that away right now. Uh, let's see, no surprise to anyone. Black is not going to back off. I don't think anyone expects that here because it is a rather slow move. If we were going to play it now, it's in the hope that our opponent takes a base. So we can take an open corner if we're going to play the diagonal. Instead, black decides pincer. Uh, Q5 is almost always slow though. Um, yeah, more or less. It really depends on the situation. Some situations it can be okay. Uh, we see it with diagonal mostly. If we opened up this way, for example. Um, let's not do that either. Let's just go something a bit simpler. Here, here, here. Sometimes we see the diagonal here instead because we realize that pincering can be a problem with the whole simply jumping out and attacking and being able to do two things at once. We don't typically see that a uh, whole lot. We're more inclined to doing a little bit simpler. Take your base, uh, take attention up top, something. But unless you're cross for a second, we don't really see the diagonal all that often. Instead, we would probably see the open corner or the pincer as we are seeing here. So, black pincers. White decides not to settle locally. White changes directions, as we would expect, because what are you going to really do? What are you really going to do here? Are you going to go into this variation? The variation that you know probably is going to favor you in a fight. Only trouble is, the fight isn't going to happen. I mean, at most, you might get black kicking you. But really, he's going to take an, uh, the black's just going to take the open corner. Because what are you going to do now? Are you going to keep trying to kill the stone you're pincering? Are you going to leave its Aji for later? Be a bit unusual. So instead, white changes directions. Black obviously knows not to have these two stones connect on up because that would be extremely bad. So we're going to keep them separated. Stone is obviously not dead, just because you attach to it. And now this is becoming very, very standard here, uh, this exchange, and then taking your base. And from here, there are quite a few variations that you can actually play. Uh, in this game, white black sides to pincer these uh, two stones. In a game that I want to say that I did just go over a, a game like this, we saw a very, very patient play. Yeah, Cho Cho Han, I think, I, I did a uh, week before last, right? He decided to bend and take his, in, in, uh, take his uh, profit. Um, R3 only local move. Uh, in terms of applying a lot of pressure to your opponent, yeah. I mean, if you Hane here... This is still pretty easy to just go back and live with still. But this isn't really going to die just yet. Doesn't seem to be. Keeping out of the corner, if you're going to follow up, then yes. Because, I mean, what is your opponent going to do? Is he going to drop down? That's not really what 
you want to do if you're trying to not die. Um, extending obviously is too slow. So it's a little bit harder to uh, find out how you're going to live back there rather than, where's the other variation? Yeah, rather than doing something like this, for example, and knowing that, well, I can just Hane here, and, you know, if you pull back there, there's still a lot in the corner, and that's not really all that difficult to settle with, right? But, in this game, we do not see the R3. We actually see an attack on these two stones. Bit of an aggressive game. And here is where, believe it or not, our first decision lies, because up until here, we can study this and pretty much know what to do. We've seen this in a lot of games recently, so we can pretty much memorize this position. Like, okay, I can approach, if I'm pincered, I can change directions, because I know there's Aji behind there, but I'm attacked, so now I have to make up decisions like all by myself. Do I protect? Do I take the open corner? You know, what do I do? So this is where, in our game, things start getting interesting. And we can begin to see a little bit more into the mind of our opponent. Are they a greedy kind of player? A greedy player probably takes the open corner. It's like, I don't care about the odds you in the lower right. I don't care about how much odds you have against my two stones that aren't alive yet. On the middle right side, I'm just going to say you can't do anything against it, and I'm going to take a corner for myself. And be greedy. Sweet. That is something that we can do, and many of your opponents probably will do so. In the interest of not losing the game, on the other hand, we're going to pick something to strengthen. Because having one thing that's weak can be okay. Having two things that are weak, not making a whole lot of sense, and it gets exponentially worse the higher up you go. Uh, comments. Let's see, what do we have here? Oh, speaking of which... Okay, I'm recording. Uh, speaking of which, be a boss, good idea. Uh, there is no be a boss on KGS, so that's not a uh, button that has been implemented, so it's kind of hard to find. Um, RJM says, could P10, that is the jump, and treat R3 and D16, and D16, ah, okay as Miai. Alright, I see. White are threes, and what do you base that on? Do you have uh, a plan for that? Have you seen the game before? Did you just run and search a database? How did you come to R3? R3 looks good. <laughs> now that is a really great answer. It's a nice honest answer for a nice honest game. It's like, I'm picking it because I think it looks good. Why does it look good? Don't know. It just rubs me the right way. R3 means black has no base. Not really worried about a base. If you're playing R3, you're not playing this because, oh yes, we have an attack against black. More like, we're just going to live in the corner, and the influence that we're giving away here isn't going to hurt us on the other side too much. Because the chance of getting a severe attack on these stones so small. And no, he did not mess up the tree. This is the actual game. So white does decide to live in the corner. We get to live pretty easily. Poke. Nice little forcing move. You must be a boss. You might be. You might be. Alright, so nice little exchange here. That looks like the variation we had before, right? Um, which tree was that? Uh, I'll go back and look at that later. N1 is force before fixing. Uh, yes, it is. Now the question is, is white alive in the corner as is, or does white still need moves there? What says you... Are we alive? Are we perfectly alive? Is there a code? 
Are we dead? It looks like we're alive. Everyone is agreeing that we're alive? If we're alive, surely that's bad for us, right? If we're black? Because white can protect now, which she does. So isn't this bad for black? Good? Bad? What do you think? Ah, I like white here. So says Nizumi 8. Why would it be bad for black? Because we do not get to actually put pressure on this lovely group that we would like to put pressure on. We have nice influence. We had a group here that we could smush and gain profit from. Unfortunately, sente to white means protect. So how do we do that? How do we use this? How do we go from... Where do we go from here? What do we do? How do we follow up? Because our stones have to make sense, right? There's got to be something that we're going to do with them. So what are we doing with these things? Rukus is says, take the corner. It's like, forget the previous stones. Salvage, take the open corner. Do something. Approach the bottom left, says Nizumi 8. And so said Chachi and RJM. Now, those two ideas are so important that we could approach here or we could take the open corner. But if we take the open corner, we're saying, you know what? I don't mind never being able to use this influence for anything ever throughout the entire game. Really didn't want to do that anyway. I prefer that these stones just give me a headache for the next 50 moves while I struggle to do something with them. Because we're not going to profit from it, that's for sure. We might take a stone if we're lucky. But this way says, you know what, our opponent's probably not taking that open corner. So we can extend and profit from this still. And this is why I say that the game is extraordinarily honest. We have influence. We want to do something with said influence. So we approach rather than be greedy and take the open corner. White backs off because really there's no reason here to pincer. If you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I'd pincer that, then you, my friend, are a very, very greedy person. If we can picture any kind of pincer here, then what we are picturing is a lack of territory for White throughout the entire game. Because where are you going to profit from? Here? Is that going to be your territory? And is that going to be your territory? And is this going to be your territory? That is not a lot of territory, you have to admit. So there's no reason to be jealous here. No reason whatsoever. Tengen is a lot of territory, so trolls Mike2096. Thank you very much. Uh, you All right. So, question was, black jumps up? That would be a very honest move, and it is, in fact, black's move, yes. Black is using the influence to keep building up, rather than being greedy and taking the open corner. White decided to take the, con the uh, corner for herself, because why not? Our stones are fine, right, on the right-hand side? Our group is okay? L3 is Aji, we don't have to do anything with it right now, and it's bad to consider doing something with it. Open corner, definitely a lot larger. And now you want to do F17, that is the next largest point on the board, is it not? And you are quite correct, F17 is played. We have the larger than life, large knight. If we can grab an extension from it, that'd be really, really nice. Because we know that our opponent can live back here wherever they really feel like plopping a stone. They can just kind of hover a stone over that general area and drop it and wherever it happens to lay. It'll probably live. So you kind of want to profit from that when that happens. Having a framework in place is a good idea for that. Isn't that extension already compromised by P10? What is P10? No! 
if there is an extension here and black gets a wall then this is really easy to profit from we've got wall got extension we can build off it really easy p10 does not ruin your ability to profit on the top of the board it does make it easier to reduce i mean if we play here and we're kicked we have somewhere to run to that's pretty nearby white backs off black gets extension pretty straightforward game so far now here's where white's second chance to do something really really great comes to mind because we have sente again every time we have sente we have to figure out what are we going to do with it don't have to ask ourselves if there's any weak groups we already know there isn't so either profit or reduction right expansion invasion reduction those are pretty much your options right now you want to go into the 3 3 okay where are our reduction points on the top of the board though i mean it's good to know what our options are right so where are all of our options this, rather than being good or bad just what are they We've got, uh, I know someone said R17, let's just click that. We have O17, sure. We have um, A17, yeah, okay, okay. So there's only three, O, yeah, uh, H, M, M, okay. I guess I'm kind of there, that's true. Uh, R14, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So right away we can we can rule out a few ideas. We're probably gonna rule out E, because that seems like it's just trying to solidify the top side for black, right? We can probably remove that. A might do the same thing, but A might be sente depending on what variation we play. So it's it's still there. Uh, B and D. Those are the ones that really catch our attention. It's like, well, we've got somewhere to run, right? But what if we don't invade here? What if we actually kicked? I mean, is this is this gonna be a thing? Can we do this? I'd be a little bit hesitant to do this because I'm running towards a group, but I don't think I want that group to be split. I mean, I would hate to see anything resembling this right now. Because if I have to go back and do any kind of defense, I have just given the entire center away to my opponent, because now I have to live in two places. Yahtzee. So I don't, want, don't really want to run to that right now, I think. Maybe if we had like a move like this first, then I'd go in deep, because I'm just one uh, jump away from connecting really a little bit better than having to run multiple and then hope we don't get cut off. So I think I'd probably want a move like P12 in if I was going to do that. That's just my opinion. It might be perfectly fine. You might have a really, really great way of living with that, and that's okay. Uh, the don't be a bad neighbor proverb. Oh, this is where I show my horrible lack of study, and I have no idea what proverb that's referring to. Because I do not know many. My proverbs come mainly from Dasan. And I know the dangers of playing with fire and then going off to play. And that's really about it. But hey, it's an important one. So, go me. Uh, let's see. So white does invade here. Now, what do you think black is uh, is interested in. What do you think? Territory or influence? Give you a hint. I said this was a really honest game. Dial in or delay in? Anyway, wrong for you, I'm sorry. We do have a rather influential thing growing on the bottom. 
take an influence here as well. So when white wedges, black plays up rather than from below. If we do this, then we're interested in just keeping this off and giving, you know, influence to our opponent. We just want the territory here and that's it. Hopefully ladders work for us if we're playing this way. If they don't, you're kind of doing something a little bit wrong. So lots of reasons why we're not doing this. So black plays here. And now another interesting idea. Because this is not a move that we see very often. We usually see this one again. Why? Because we want them their points. We want the profit on the upper right. The 3-3 three, three is still, you know, mildly available. Oops, oops, sorry, hit the microphone. It's still mildly available. And maybe we can profit on this somehow, maybe. But no! Black backs off, saying you are not going to connect and I'm going to get more of a wall. You will live. I mean, bam, you're alive. And I'm going to make myself nice and strong, give myself a wall here. And I'm going to protect the wall, make sure there's no cutting points there that you can take advantage of easily. So really, really honest game. The bottom was interested in the influence, the top we see interested in influence, and we're giving up Sente to strengthen ourselves as well. So we know exactly what black is doing. So we should be able to stop it, right? I mean, black isn't being tricky here. What black wants is staring us in the face. So how are we going to follow this up? RJM is also a patient player. Many of you could say, well then, oh my god, I better play Tengen or something immediately to get rid of all of that influence. Because one move by itself out in the middle of nowhere will so get rid of all of the influence. But rather than freaking out and trying to reduce all of it immediately, still lots of ways uh, to reduce, so RJM just wants to take his uh, profit for himself. Take away a large point as well. Make sure that black can't uh, approach from here. It'd be really, really painful for us to see. And is, in fact, the move that's played. You had other ideas, though. Um, B wants D7. D yes, yes, you are right. You are right about that. Would like D7, that is true. Um, P12. All right. Um... This goes with the whole, let's, you know, reduce things a bit. Uh, 05, 05, 05, 05, 05, pokey pokey move. But yes, this is definitely nice and patient and taking our points. It's now up to black to show us how you're going to use all of this influence when you cannot trick us into what you want. I mean, I see what you're going for. There's really no weak groups running around. So what's going to happen? What can we possibly do here? Black decides to poke. It's like, I can invade or I can keep growing myself. It is completely up to you to decide what I get. Another rather honest move, just trying to develop. Nothing crazy going on here. And white says, you know what I want to do? I want to take my territory and take all of the left hand side for myself. To which black replies, well if you're going to give me sente kind sir, or ma'am in this case, then I'm going to keep growing the area that I'm building for myself. Really, really straightforward moves. And we knew they were coming. We knew Black wanted to keep building up that influence. It's exactly what happened. It wasn't like we got into a complicated fight and Black found themselves... the influence through some weird exchange or by 
pressuring a group. It just created something. It's like, no, I just gonna jump. You know, this move was Sente, you know, the one over, uh, the one here, that was Sente, but, you know, that wasn't, and this isn't, and I, I, I definitely didn't create that in Sente. So yeah, it's really, really straightforward. And everyone is now saying you have to invade this. Easier said than done. Where do you pick your invasion? Do we invade it? Where do we invade it? We invade at M8. That ugh, shoulder hit from underneath. That is very risky. Um, Inazuma says G9. Eh, Inazuma's kind of close. Chachi says G8 on the other hand, and congrats to Chachi. Very obvious move, right? There is a large knight here. One thing we know about large knights is that they can in fact be cut. We cut them constantly, all the time, oftentimes without even thinking about it. So there is weakness here. And if we can force a response, then we can begin invading. Cool. Black defends. And again, nothing tricky. Nothing like, I'm gonna attach to you and poke and crosscut and attach and things to try to kill you. It's like, no, I'm just gonna make sure you can't cut me. That's all I'm going to do. So really, really honest move there, yeah. <laughs> you do things. Careful about getting too complicated there. So obviously, white's free to play another move there. So keeps reducing. It's a nice area you got here. Don't mind if I make myself at home. You never think about things? I admit, I always think about things first. Simple ideas sometimes kind of escape a little bit, usually off thinking about the things. F12 a problem now? I don't know, what is F12? Um, F12 is that. What is F12 and why is it a problem? F12 is here, yeah? For who? Who is that a problem for? Is it for... Is black gonna play F12, I guess? Or is white playing F12? I'm really confused. It, is, it, is, it looks like a little bit of a weird stone from both players. I guess if you're playing a move like F12 because we can still reduce black, or reduce, uh... Yeah, we can connect our reduction up as white, or if we want to play as black, we can try and cut white off. I mean, that's a good idea. But black just protects the points first. Another very, very honest move. It's like, you know what? You're not going any deeper. Let's not be greedy here. I get to profit a little bit. I feel that like black is lacking in territory. It's really hard to say. Because this side here is still is not weak, but there's Aji that we can use against it. So I don't really know how this er immediate area is turning out. Uh, similarly, this area not really certain, because we need a few moves to defend. But it does seem that way. It easily seems like we can uh, envision this game just coming into a numbers game, which black's not going to have enough of. And I think white's agreeing with you, because white decides to play first a uh, little bit of a forcing move. Black plays the variation that we almost never ever play, and if you've ever taught Go, 
you probably had your student play this against you, to which you hit them and said, no, don't do that again, because it just gets rid of Aji. But in this case, it gives us Sente. And if we have Sente, we can go back and attack the two stones in the middle, which are much more important. As much as we don't want to do it, we can't simply descend and let white do whatever. Or, yeah, let white do whatever is, you know, gonna do to live. Do need Sente here, so we have no choice but to kind of like give up the local area, solidify that corner, so we can keep surrounding. But white knows the danger, so aids group. Black says no connection for you. White says you're quite right. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. So we poke and then connect. Now there's a cutting point. The glorious at night games that everyone remembers. White's defending, and still, nothing unusual happening here. White's been it, or Black's been it in the middle the entire time, and is constantly trying to strengthen themselves up in the center. That's like the only thing that we're seeing happening here, while White is now trying to settle. Cut point. Cut point can't really take advantage of because of the other cut point. So the question is, what are you going to do now? Because this is not going to die. Ever. Nice try. For those of you who cannot read this out, white cannot run out that stone, otherwise the entire right hand side is going to die. That would be bad, in case you were wondering. So the S15 stones are in fact dead. Now it's kind of getting a little bit harder to cut through that still. So we get rid of the Aji. White gets to strengthen himself in the center. Black immediately attaches to it to keep him from, uh, or keep her rather from connecting up the stones. Alright, so who thinks those three stones are going to live? Anyone? Every, almost everyone, 4Q says those will not live, but 2Q and 9Q and 2Q says they will in fact live. Froddy Witherlings Hit, that's what that uh, abbreviations for, by the way. If anyone like talks to him, always call him Froggy Witherlings. That's that's the full name there. Uh, he says that they will, but they shouldn't. Okay. Good guess there, Froggy Witherlings. So White is now looking for shape. Everyone assumes that white will find the shape. Let's find out that's actually true. Black defends. Not going to cut off my stone and do horrible things to it. Attach. Okay. Now we're picking up shape here. It looks like we're almost alive. It is a very honest game, yes. Actually pokes because we can still clamp after this move if we must which is why white doesn't simply connect it's extending up and up and up starting to connect up all the things all the things not connecting up trying to get the shapes keeping himself nice and strong Poking at any potential eyes. And 
And now it looks like... It looks like we're slowly getting life here. Maybe. Maybe. White says... I'm going to play elsewhere now. Does anyone still think those white stones are going to live? Because we have an eye, right? Can we make two eyes? Is it possible? Because we kind of have one, right? Kind of got that one there. Kind of hard to, hard to get rid of it. We can still sort of get out. So that's a lot. Not to mention we've got other options available to us. So it looks like we have so many different ways to potentially to connect on up or make eyes that maybe we're okay here. Black makes this easy exchange. White's got to respond in order to not die. Another interesting sequence here. Because this white group, not a hundred percent okay just yet. Right? If it gets completely cut off. If it gets completely cut off, kind of hard to see where the other eye's coming from. So do you have to be really, really careful? Which is why I said it's a very honest game by Black, but it also does feature some fighting. And maybe, if we're lucky, maybe some dying, too. So we go for a cut. Why are you going for a cut? Because we've established that things aren't alive yet. And if things aren't alive, then cut points are our friend. Unless you're the one with the things that aren't alive yet, in which case, probably not your friend so much. It's kind of that friend that you had to take care of your cat and probably went off and pawned all your furniture. Might, might be that kind of friend, but uh, not the friend we're looking for, essentially. So, what has to decide? Decides to give up in exchange for making sure the middle is completely fine. Okay. Profit on top now. Upper right corner for black is now also very, very small. This is a forcing move. And it looks like white is now fine in the middle. In one of the middles, rather. There's kind of two groups there. Threatens to hook up. Asks, are you really alive and connected here? White says, yes, I am. Like, okay, I guess you are. But is this really alive and connected? Yes, it is. Like, all right, everything's, everything is now nicely alive and connected. We've got our eyes, no troubles here. So make certain that white can't connect. And again, we've got that middle group again. That group that we would love to kill. That you've all said would live, should live. White protects, and black is playing the first questionably honest move in the entire game. It is a move of things. We can see what white wants, or what black wants rather. Black just wants to get stronger here. Because by getting stronger here, we're cutting off white from ever making anything in the middle. And now we've asked the question, how are you alive? Because you've ignored this constantly. 
So you better have something really, really, really good here. What do you think, are we live? Prime says we're live. Oh, six? What's oh, six? Oh, snap. All right, I see. Mike says it's dead. FC says we're probably alive. FC says it would be dead if I were white and alive if I were black. All right, that's pretty honest. Well, Q players rejoice. Ta-da! It is your move. The move every Q player would want to play. We see this shape, we're definitely cutting it, right? But here's a question. If a pro player is resorting to the move that all Q players want to play, how live are you really? Black protects. White goes ahead and cuts. This had better work. This is where we're getting our eyes from. Poke. And poke. Tries to live, but now we are so strong in the area that black just makes it false. Now we're in a little bit of trouble here, because if that's false, where are our eyes coming from? Maybe here? Maybe, maybe eyes here? No, no, no eyes there. Um, it would have been Sente for black, or for, no, who, what, which person? Uh, Sente for white to poke at it. White goes up, protects weak stone, forms I, denies I. Threatens to connect up, says go right ahead. You can kill off the two stones if you want. I'm after bigger game. White takes. Black connects. White goes back in Atari, because, you know, why not? YOLO and stuff. But are we actually alive there? It does not quite look like we're living. In the sense that there's no possible way for us to make two eyes, it doesn't look like we're living. Make a little bit of an exchange here. Maybe a poke. Is, that, is poke gonna work? Poke doesn't work, okay, no pokes. Um, can I like reduce you a few points? No, no reducing a few points, okay. Well, that's clearly not gonna live any time this year. So all we can do now is prevent white from getting in. No. Sorry, there, there's no other variation there. White's just dead. It's kind of what amused me about this game. Because we, there was absolutely no ambiguity of what black was going for the entire game. You can't build influence any slower than black did. even got invaded. Inset, the, the first invasion move was Sente. Right? The probe for the uh, large knight, and we protected it in Gote. But still, so freaking dead. 
I mean, this is a game that would frustrate so much. It's like, I I thought I was alive there, or something? I don't know. Uh, anyway, now we get a game of reduction here. Because keep in mind, um... Okay, guesstimator I can't show you with. But the game, you know, white's got a lot of territory, right? I mean, the whole left side is white. Has some on the bottom. Has some on the top. It's just this huge clump of stones in the middle being dead for black and the whole, and a little bit of the right-hand side is pretty much where black's getting territory from. Uh, poke. No come in. Atari. No sorry. No for you. How about I play here? Nope. Nothing going on there either. Uh, cut through. Well, can't do that otherwise, you know, live. So we're going to connect. Uh, cut, maybe? But no, that's, that's not working either. Okay, so we just take some profit. Prevent white from coming in anymore. Maybe try something here. But black doesn't let anything happen. This is all nice and alive. So white finally resigns. But yeah, very interesting game. I thought, I mean, this is, uh, like I said, you cannot develop influence slower than this. <laughs> so boring. Um, I don't know, I don't think it was that boring, because we did have some interesting fights going on. The right side being so unstable and having to live uh, was... Oh, yeah, the whole right side having to live really important for this. And as DRB is actually commenting right now, you know, what did white do wrong? It is almost one of those games where it feels like you got exactly what you want out of the game, but you still kind of lost. And you are kind of left wondering, how did this actually happen? Uh, de definitely reading would definitely help. Uh, I can only assume that White did in fact think that there were going to be two eyes here. That would uh, that would be something that needs to be fixed. Um, <laughs> playing away when your group is almost dead, that's a nice one. That's always good to be reminded of. It's like, yeah, 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 that's, that, that's about good enough right there. That's all I need. I'll play away now. But yeah, uh... Definitely a weird situation. Anyway, so I thought this game was very interesting for that reason in and of itself. We don't usually see games like this, where someone has clearly m made a life and death mistake that they're basing the entire game on. It's like, no, that looks like it's about alive. And it's gonna look like it's about alive for all of these moves. It's about alive, yeah, it's, it's probably fine. I'll go back and play here, because that, that group's fine. It's still fine. Yeah, who cares, we're live there. It's still alive. We can just poke, because, you know, whenever we have this shape, we can just poke. Sure, why not? And then suddenly we don't have our eyes anymore. Huh. To be fair, this variation that was read out here probably works a little bit better before the exchange on the left. Before those D13 stones uh, actually appear on the board. I mean, if we actually were to take those away, then we can see that, yeah, clearly black can't play this way, right? So, of course we can't be killed. This is crazy. But after them, yeah, you might want to, you know, go on back and read that out. Because, yeah, mistake was clearly made. Uh, G7, not so good. Um, when did that actually get played? Uh, I'm not on my move tool. Move tool, G7. Okay, there we go. 
Um, well, the question still is what are you going to do instead? Uh, you're voting G12 now. G12. Huh? Oh, for white. Okay. Uh, hey. Well, without G7, or, yeah, without, what? Yeah, without G7, you're not going to make two eyes there anyway, right? So, not sure where you're going with this. And when you go back and play it, we still have this. So we're still dead. So this is just like kind of changing the order of the moves around. Almost like we're still really, really in trouble. Anyway, I thought it was a fun game. For those reasons. Uh, between who was the aggressive game? Uh, let me go back and look. That was going to be between... Let's see... Other game was... Oh, and by the way, just so you know, I did not mess up the tree this time, so ha to all of you. Oh, and if anyone actually wants to donate towards these lectures, we have like, I don't know, like one or two left, I forget, then you may do so at the link provided. Especially since I have not messed up a tree for once. Well, yeah, lectures are pretty cheap. What are they? Twenty bucks a lecture, I think it is. Not that expensive at all. If you feel free to donate, you may do so. Uh, let's see. What else am I gonna do? I really do intend to do a World Baduk game. Um, sometime this week or this weekend, rather. I was actually gonna do it last week. I got distracted or something, I don't remember what. Oh, I also have a game review that I'm uploading soon to YouTube. Uh, I reviewed a game between Kemboy, who, if you don't know who that is, it's a 3 Don, and Frozen Soul, who you might remember from either some of the um, random streams I've done, and also from a lecture that I've done as well. Uh, I played against him in one of my lectures. I reviewed their game while they were playing it, and I will be uploading the video of that uh, shortly after I upload this one, I guess. <laughs> yes, it does feature the uh, Taisha and the Large Avalanche, that is true. In the same game, uh, yeah, one of the rooms here on KGS was having a tournament, and yeah, they were paired up. They asked me if I wanted to play as well, but I thought it would be a lot more fun reviewing Frozen Souls game than actually playing in it, so I went with that option instead. And I'm glad I did, because it was a very interesting game. So if you have not seen that yet, you will be able to do so later on on YouTube. So you can look for this being uploaded later, you can up look forward to that being uploaded later, and hopefully a game on uh, World Baduk will be uploaded later as well. Uh, KGS series depends on the person I have co-commentating with me in the KGS series. I haven't done that in a while as a result. I have decided that against my better judgment I will be doing a fly or die series and someone mentioned or series lol. I'll probably be playing a few games on fly or die because it just seems like I, I can't resist. It seems like um, I don't know. Someone apparently asked me to a back alley game of Go, so how can we say no to that? To which would probably follow it up with going on to Yahoo and playing there as well and seeing which one is worse. That might be fun uh, comparison to do. So yeah, I will be doing both of those. Let's find out which is the worst Go server online. Can't wait to find that out. 
because everyone knows that I prefer Taigem as my favorite. So, which is the worst? Definitely, definitely curious about that. The Nine Don I signed up for today literally had no one. What? Nine Don? What are you talking about? Where are you, Nine Don? I am confused. Oh, Lisa all server, I think, right? Hmm. Yeah, he's trying to get a server up and running. I don't think he realizes how difficult it is. I mean, I think Tygem got up and running because... One of the professionals told their students to play there. So they did, and everyone kind of migrated over there. I want to say that's how it got up and running. So, unless Lee Siddle's got other professional friends and students that he can do likewise with... I don't know, it's going to be hard for him to get that up and running. If he gives exclusive lectures, that would also do it. But then again, people might just show up for the lectures and then never play on there. So, I don't know. It's hard starting a server, man. It's really hard starting a server. I wish him much luck with that. It's kind of like a Kaya Go server. We don't really hear much about that anymore nowadays either. That was supposed to be like the KGS killer. How did KGS get started? KGS got started really, really easy, because you had, what, two options for English Go at the time when it got started? You had uh, IGS, which is a Japanese server with an English client, and you had, like, some MSN gaming zone, and you had, like, Yahoo, um, NNGS, I think, was around at that time. So you didn't really have a lot of competition for English Go servers. I mean, you didn't have Tygem. Or if you did, there were definitely no English servers. Um, World Baduk Oro, I believe, not around at that time. So it got started by process, or by default, really. You really couldn't play anywhere else. So yeah, good time to start a server, and KGS came around and did so. So there's KGS for you. Yeah, I suppose. Well, the car would help a lot of Go a lot. I mean, they would have gone to anywhere to play Go. But yeah. Anyway, uh, we'll be having another lecture week after next. There's a lot of uploads Go related going onto my channel, like I mentioned. You can look forward to those. Um, I might stream the light, the flyer die, and the Yahoo just for giggles, and I'll just like upload the streams later on, so I can look forward to that as well. If you are following me on uh, my Twitter account, you will know when I go live for those particular things. If you do not know the account, you can do so there. I always post uh, when I'm doing kind of a special stream. Anyway, that said, I will see you all week after next.